have fun with it. Uh, speaking of that real quick, uh, have you heard the room, uh, rumor, diehard rumor? Is it a diehard, diehard rumor? It's a diehard rumor concerning Star Wars. Oh, okay. I I thought you were is a diehard rumor concerning the diehard fridge. I'm just saying it's a really diehard rumor. Okay, so uh, what's the rumor? Um, because Disney is losing so much damn money, they are considering it selling Lucasfilm and the Star Wars property back to George Lucas. I, I, I keep hearing various stuff on that, and I'm going to be honest with you, I think George is done. Um, and because, like, right now they've got, what, Indiana Jones get ready to drop. They've got a bunch of other Lucas properties that they've been playing with. Like, the Willow series, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And, I mean, I get where Disney's coming from with making most of this, like, Disney Plus exclusives, which is fine. Uh, cause they're still like, Hey, we're still making bank. You know, we're finding it's easier to bill people a steady five bucks a month for Disney plus versus $20 a movie ticket. It's just more financially viable for us. And there's all kinds of rumors like that, but I don't foresee it happening. I, I, I think it's bullshit. And right I'm now really... I'm almost in the same, same boat or similar boat. I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah, and not only that, but, like, the reason why George sold Star Wars was basically he wanted to pass it on because he knew he's getting up there in age, you know? I mean, we've already lost a lot of our major creators. George Lucas is going to die before you know it. So is Steven Spielberg. So there's all these other creators, you know, and at least with him passing the torch on to Disney, at least it's going to somewhere that's going to at least try to carry on and champion that. I want to say, I want to say this. He didn't just pass along. I think he was forced to pass on, whether it was Kathleen Kennedy or someone else next to him that was one of his many yes men because they were probably – he didn't, he didn't want to – I think even he said that he wanted uh, – he was getting up there in years, even though the fans wanted him to complete, do the final trilogy in regards to Star Wars. He was feeling, oh, by the time I get around to it, I'll be too old or this, or that, dead. and the other thing, or dead. Uh, and not to mention, uh, depending on who you want to talk to, he was being egotistical because you had folks – that were really good in making trilogies like Peter Jackson mm -hmm. saying, Hey, you don't want to do it. No, you know, let me do it. I did the hob, you know, like it or hate the Hobbit. He did a pretty, I want to say he, he knew how to handle a series. Give it to me. Let me handle it. I have, I did six movies, you know, let me handle it. No other folks came up to him like, let, you know, we've done it. We've done trilogies. We know we can have respect for your property. Give us the reins. No. Oh, by the way, hi, Disney. Thanks for all the money. You can do it. And now well, we have a whole... to understand that his health has been on the decline since the prequels. I mean, all of the vocalizations for General Grievous's, like the coughing and the hacking, that's him. That's his actual coughing and hacking. And the thing is, do you know why we got the uh, re-edit of 4, 5, and 6? Mm. Why? Alimony. Mm. Just the uh, whole pretty much, McClunky. No, um, at, the at the time, at the time of the when the original trilogy 4, 5, and 6 was made, he was married to the producer. Mm -hmm. And she's the one that did a lot of the editing and choices in regards to what went into the story and all that. And sometime after in that process of making four, five, and six, they got a divorce. And with that divorce, he had to pay child support, alimony. Plus, because she was producer and all that fun jazz, and I think co-writer and all that, he had to pay her a lot of the 
royalties and all that. And because in Hollywood, in regards to under a lot of these uh, guilds and uh, unions, if you change it, you don't have to pay mm. a lot of the original folks. And because he was paying alimony and child support, he didn't want to shell out the extra funds to her anymore. So therefore, we got the edited versions of their original trilogy and that's why we'll never get them again because oh oh have... oh contraire my friend they are available the the theatrical original runs of all the star wars trilogy is available um because some people have found prints of them they're just not legally available they're that's legally what I'm saying legally available. legally available like the despecialized editions um, right now are actually running on theatrical prints from the original runs. And we're talking all three movies, Star Wars, Empire, and Jedi. I will not ever give them episode numbers because in my book, it's always just Star Wars. Not Star Wars, episode four, A New Hope. No, Star Wars. So it, it was pretty much, that's why you won't get an official drop of the original trilogy it's well, we pretty did much technically on dvd but it was actually a laser disc reissue on dvd um i've got a couple bootlegs of that it's not the greatest print in the world but it's better than nothing or at least until i can figure out how to copy these blu-ray files <laughs> so i can make my own despecialized editions yeah i can go online and buy a bootleg but to me, that's not the fun of bootlegging unless you're desperate. I don't. I part of me wants to. I might not have this week. Might not as much as I want to watch it. I may or may not have the funds to catch the Flash movie, but I'll see. As if result, not, I'll ask. That is a whole can of worms. I I refuse. Yeah. I ref if somebody bought the tickets to go watch me, you know, to to have me go watch it with them, by all means, I'll go. If somebody has a copy of it, they want to let me borrow. I'll watch it, but I will not pay my own money to go see it. Good. Then I'm going to be saving money this week <laughs> because uh, Ezra Miller, they're a piece of crap. I'm sorry. They've done enough crimes and enough problems in the world where. I, I can't rightly go to a movie, no matter how much they want to plug the nostalgia factor that Michael Keaton's Batman is in it. They can do that all they want. That's not going to erase the problems with Ezra Miller. Like, come on, like kidnapping, grooming, abusing women. I don't care how you identify. None of that is cool. And that's no, from a trans I, woman. Good, good. I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna save my money there. <laughs> not going to have to worry about it. Yeah, I'm not watching no. it. I think if I go to see anything this weekend, it'll be to go watch the new Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. So, because that seems like it's decent. So, I might catch it after the fact, but still. Well, it is after the fact. It already came out, what, not this weekend? But I know, but weekend. after, after the fact. Yeah. When it comes out on streaming somewhere. I haven't even caught Guardians yet. I know, blasphemy. James neither have I. Neither have I. I I'm, I, wait, I'm waiting on it to come to Disney Plus. Yeah, I gotta pay that bill. I pick Max. up the yearly. Oh, yeah. Eh, I'll pay it when I pay it. I know Avatar 2 is on it, but it's like, do I really want to be bored for three hours? Watch Dances with Wolves with Blue People? <laughs> no, it's not just that it's, uh the Avatar or uh, James Cameron's version of Moana, Way of the Water. <laughs> the Way of the Water. <laughs> oh, God. It's Avatar. <laughs> the last blue airbender. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and to think, <laughs> and to think they had to change the name of that one movie. So what was it just called? It was just called The Last Airbender instead of just Avatar The Last yeah. Airbender. I'm like, it was already a dumpster fire because they had Mr. What a Twist direct it. What's, you know. What a Twist? I'm sitting there like, where's the twist in this? Uh, I that... the plot. 
I changed it. What a like twist. The whole... <laughs> what a twist. I thought I saw uh, like one of these meme thread type of ordeals of uh, what if you had Team Avatar, they they didn't, what happened was uh, Aang was not discovered or they didn't discover it and it was just uh, what's her name faking her way through as the Avatar and because like she can if like wood water can be in the ground so that's how she was faking earth bending and you know water's in the air, air. Uh, water, water could be in the air four different properties right and that's how she was uh, faking a lot of like being an airbender and you know just by manipulating the water and the ground and wood and everything like that and she still saw went to um teamed up with Tolf and everybody's kind of in, in on it and trying to uh, convince everybody in this long con. And they even had the, everything kind of falls out the same way in a way, including uh, what's his name, trying to help her fake firebending in order to complete the whole aspect using water bending. <laughs> well, I mean, it's... But, uh, it, it's kind of like that whole joke about, like, the X-Men power sets. Like, when you sit down and think about how they would physically be able to do that and then what they're actually controlling to do it. Like Magneto, he'd also be able to control electricity. He could be an Omega level, uh, an omega level threat right off the bat. Iceman, all he's doing is inertly either absorbing heat or pushing it out. So he could control both heat and ice. And so they would actually think, have dual power sets. Uh, it has came out as um, Magneto is an Omega level mutant because he is able to control because he's able to control magnets. He and as it came out in one, I forgot what it X Men thing was that he was in essence can make the sun go supernova. Yeah, is that for him to do it? He says I. If I push myself that hard, I'd get a migraine. Pretty much he has that, like a boat from the limiter, that if he did that, he'd pretty much have an aneurysm. He'd, yeah. in essence, kill himself prior to their son killing everybody on Earth. It's um, kind of like with Iceman, because you... Iceman, to... has, Iceman is the same way, because he could literally freeze the entire planet. Right, but and... see, when you freeze something, you're removing the energy from it. And when you heat something up, you're giving it energy. So in reality, he would have to have a way to expel that energy. So it, it would be kind of like a, a dual problem. You know what I mean? Not only could I he freeze the, something, but he could burn something to cinders. And in, in the book version of the sequel, yes, I read the book version of the uh, X2. Was it the um, junior novelization? <laughs> I don't know if it's a ju ju junior novelization, but... Uh, it goes into the aspect of when he was, he approaches, uh, somebody lights the uh, building on fire and he was pretty much there. He was wearing himself out because he was drawing in the moisture to use the, you know, he wasn't turning everything into ice, but he was using the moisture, bringing in the moisture to help put out the fire. And he was on, it, the scene right that was probably cut was storm watching him do that on the news or watching him seeing the news of somebody lighting the building on fire and him seeing him using his powers to try to put it out. And in the book, it says that she was like, Hey, he's doing what he's trained to do to save, to be that hero. I need, and he's looking tired. I got to, you know, help him. And through what she does, bringing it in like a storm, Mm -hmm. her namesake to bring in rain so he's able to use that moisture to kind of condense it down to help him put out that fire and so he's and we go able over to the map folks so, we go from x-men the transformers to... <laughs> everything so I, I know how to clip this science so how am i going to clip this i have no idea we'll figure but it out we'll i'll have figure like it out 20 20 million titles do we podcast? No, we just we just have a conversation and watch it.